I want you to see the land we call Latin America. It is a land of striking contrasts, natural beauty beyond compare, destitution beyond belief. It is a land of conflict, oppression, and persecution. At times, it may seem devoid of opportunity, but even amid this despair, the people of Latin America embody the virtues that make God's presence so very obvious. While their material needs are great, they have a deep spirituality. They share a tremendous joy built on faith and love. It is a spirit that is perhaps unmatched anywhere in the world, but a spirit that is eagerly shared with the world. For it is the spirit of the people of Latin America that is transforming the lives of those in the United States who have truly seen Latin America. From California to Maine, the impact is evident in the lives of the clergy, religious and laity, both young and old. We have a stereotype that those poor people are poor and they have nothing to give us. And yet, when they experience this, they realize that the poor can give us so much. What can they give us? I think they give us, for example, by their own satisfaction with life and their joy for life, a renewed understanding of what life is about. Life isn't about having, life is about being, of, of, of realizing our own dignity, our own worth. Latin America, the United States of America, this is the story of two worlds. It will surprise you, it will inspire you, and it will challenge you. Two worlds coming together, each with something to offer, each with something to gain. The most recent effort to unite the churches of North and South America began in 1961 when Pope John XXIII issued a challenge. He asked the U.S. Church to dedicate 10% of its priests and religious to help the Latin American Church become more self-sufficient. That same year, through the initiative of Richard Cardinal Cushing of Boston, the Latin American Bureau was formally established by the National Catholic Welfare Conference. Under the leadership of its first director, Father John J. Considine, a Mary Knoll missioner, many initiatives were established to strengthen the relationship between the Church in Latin America and the United States. Today, the Latin American Bureau has evolved into the Secretariat for Latin America of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops. The Secretariat is under the direction of Father James J. Ronan. In the early years, the motivation for involvement with the Latin American Church was a reaction and a concern about the perception that Latin America was going to go communist, for example. And consequently, the church felt that the lack of priests and the lack of uh, clergy and laity involved in the church there was a real high factor, a risk, a concern. So my point is, the early involvement was a response to a fear. Later involvement has been more mature. It's been more of a response to an understanding of our basic calling as Christians to be concerned with one another, to be concerned with the poor. Indeed, the impact of this response has been felt equally in both the North and the South in an effort to gain a deeper understanding of both the response and its impact, the U.S. Bishops' Committee for the Church in Latin America conducted a survey of all Catholic dioceses, parishes, religious communities, and colleges. Well, it's a very encouraging study that tells us many things. More than anything, it tells us that the church in our country is strongly committed to helping the church in Latin America and that the church in our country has benefited much from the experience of reaching out to the church in Latin America. The data revealed that today, nearly 80% of the dioceses in our country contribute to the annual bishop's collection for Latin America. 
about 50% are involved in adopt-a-parish programs or help support specific projects. But most promising is that 99% of the dioceses plan to increase or at least maintain their current levels of commitment. These statistics are impressive, but although they show the larger picture, it is the individual stories that inspire us to continue the effort. Today, in the small Guatemalan Highlands village of San Lucas Toliman, more than 2,000 indigenous families have been given an opportunity to own a small parcel of land, perhaps the single most precious commodity for the poor of Latin America. This opportunity is one of many provided through the support of the Diocese of New Ulm, Minnesota, one of the first U.S. dioceses to respond to the Pope's call in 1961. From the beginning, the missioners from New Ulm accepted this challenge, but not with the intention of imposing their ways or their assistance on the people of San Lucas. They came to listen and, when appropriate, respond. We wanted to literally walk with the people, not tell them what to do, not tell them what they're supposed to be doing, not saying this program is going to be good for you, but attempting to listen, listen long enough to be able to hear, trust, confidence in that trust, and then backing in the process of growth. The opportunities provided to the people of San Lucas have allowed them to better help themselves. This response has led to the construction of more than 1,000 single-family homes, 21 school buildings, and a modern medical clinic. It has led to the establishment of an orphanage, a profitable coffee and honey cooperative, and a seed orchard to support their reforestation program. It has taken them from a literacy rate of 3% to more than 80%. It has led to the development of skills for hundreds of young Guatemalan men as stonemasons, carpenters, electricians, and plumbers. This kind of support is typical of most missions in Latin America, but certainly no less valuable are the support and the gifts the missioners bring back to the people of the New Ulm Diocese. Vatican II had refocused the image of the church emphasizing that the church is the people of God. In doing so, it invited the laity to become a part of the church's evangelization to the world. Today, in Guatemala, as in most Latin American countries, the laity plays an important role in the mission of the church. According to the bishop's study, nearly 8,000 lay men and women have been sent to Latin America since 1990 about six times more than were sent in the 1960s. The mission at San Lucas has been blessed with a steady stream of lay volunteers, young and old, from throughout the United States. Some of the volunteers at San Lucas go to offer their skills and talents, and some go for what they call the immersion experience, an opportunity to see and experience the culture, the poverty, and the faith firsthand. Many of them go uncertain of what they will discover and how they will be able to share their talents. They soon find, however, that they become enriched by the people's lives and faith. This experience not only changes their lives, but also causes them to influence others after they return home. The Most Reverend Raymond Lucker, Bishop of the Diocese of New Ulm, has witnessed the effect of this experience on many young people from his diocese. They come back and they're changed people. They've been evangelized and they become uh, evangelists up here. Now, we're not very good at evangelism. We don't quite know what that means yet. It basically means handing on our love for God, who has loved us. And it means handing on a relationship that we have with Jesus. A few miles from San Lucas, on the south side of Lake Atitlan, is the mission of Santiago Atitlan, which is sponsored jointly by the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City and the Diocese of Tulsa. The mission began in 1964. These dioceses have been affected in many ways by their relationship with the Church of Guatemala, in particular, 
One Oklahoma priest, Father Stanley Rother, who was living and working amongst the poor, was murdered because of his missionary activity. Fifteen years later, the martyrdom of Father Rother still impacts his home dioceses. He was a priest who, we feel, lived the fullness of our Catholic faith. And so he's kind of a symbol and a sign for us and an encouragement that if we live the good Catholic life and do the best we can, we too can share in the glory of God. In neighboring El Salvador, the Cleveland Latin American Mission serves parishes in three communities, including this one in La Libertad. In addition to improving the overall quality of life for the people here, the missioners have faced the added challenge of attempting to bring reconciliation after more than a decade of civil war. But despite the challenges, here, as in Guatemala, the impact of the mission's efforts has been felt on both sides.